the Marine Corps Base Quantico Ceremonial Band marching down McLaughlin Parade Field. Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spam. Just the season four changes of command we'll report on two this week. Also this week, a big change proposed for the 504 shuttle bus. These stories and more, but first, the Fort Meade Garrison Command invites the entire community to participate in the 2019 Community Strength and Themes Assessment. Your input is needed to identify perceptions of quality of life, health, safety, wellness, and satisfaction on Fort Meade. There are several ways to access the link to the survey. You can find it in the bulletin section on the Fort Meade app. It's also available on the homepage of the Fort Meade website and our Facebook page. I'll also post the link along with this week's show. The assessment survey runs through the end of July. Meanwhile, in transportation news, the Maryland Regional Transportation Authority, or RTA, announced this week that the 504 shuttle service that started last fall, running between the Savage Mark Station, Fort Meade, and Piney Orchard, is being discontinued. However, the service is being replaced by what's being called the Crofton Connector, which will run from Crofton to Fort Meade via the Watt Chapel and the Odenton Mark Station. The number of stops on Fort Meade or shuttle timetables haven't yet been released. The proposed change is set to take effect August 11th. Stay tuned. In the meantime, for more information, you can go to transitrta.com. In other news, last week, the Marine Corps Cyberspace Warfare Group welcomed a new commander in ceremonies on McLaughlin Parade Field. Colonel George David assumed command from Colonel Desmond Reed, Jr. Reed used most of his farewell to thank the Marines under his command. Uh, two teams in the last three years have been the recipient of the Marine Corps Intel Unit of the Year. Um, why? Well, because in order to get after the adversary, you got to understand them. And so these guys have dumped in and made sure we can understand our adversary so we can get after them. It's an honor and a privilege to be given the opportunity to serve this unit, to serve with these Marines um, who have built from the foundations the Corps' cyberspace capabilities. And they've done so for the last two years under truly outstanding leadership. The Marine Corps Cyberspace Warfare Group is an administrative headquarters that organizes, trains, and equips Marine Corps teams in support of U.S. Cyber Command. Elsewhere earlier this month, the Asymmetric Warfare Group also welcomed a new commander. Colonel Scott Shaw assumed command from Colonel Timothy O'Brien in ceremonies at the AWG's Pittman Indoor Range. Two years ago when I took command during my remarks, I noted how it was obvious I was joining a stellar organization. Well, today I can absolutely assure you that you are joining not only a great team, but one that delivers value to the Army each and every day. Think, adapt, anticipate. To the staff and commanders, but especially Tom Byrell, Dan Gonzalez, Freddie Gerwell, Don Hudson, and Frank Boley, Team Shaw is grateful for all that you did to bring us to the group. We look forward to working with you. Tim, thanks for a great handover. It's been world class. And, and the time you spent preparing us for this transition. Our best to you as you transition as well. A final reminder from the Soldier for Life Transition Assistance Program. If you're catching the show before Thursday, July 25th, don't forget about the Transition Assistance Hiring Event. Once again, it's coming up on the 25th from 11 to 1 at the McGill Training Center. Don't forget your resumes and dress for success. Uniforms are fully acceptable. And that's Me Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann for everyone at MeTV and the Fort Me Public Affairs Office. Have a great weekend and a great Mead Week. The Army is revising its centralized promotion board process for the first time in 50 years. The change is set to ensure that promotions are based on the most qualified soldier getting promoted versus the soldier with the most seniority. According to Army G1 officials, the new system will deliver the right person to the right job at the right time. Merit-based promotions and visibility of the Order of Merit List, or OML standings, are amongst the most significant changes that will take effect this fiscal year. The change begins with the Master Sergeant Promotion Board, where sequence numbers will be based on merit instead of on seniority. This time around, the OML will serve a different purpose. Rather than being used to generate an annual promotion list, it is being used to identify which NCOs are fully qualified. Being fully qualified does not guarantee promotion. Once deemed fully qualified, the board will evaluate NCOs using their records to determine their sequence numbers. Soldiers will also have access to personal OML standings through the Army Career Tracker website. This visibility will provide soldiers the opportunity to estimate their date of promotion, as well as see where they stand compared to their peers. As with any big change, it will take some time before things fully take effect.